Hello, my name is Adeyemi for Clueless Junkie. In this video, I'll be talking about a house foundation. If you're about to embark on your first building project, this video is made just for you. I'll be discussing recommendations, best practices, questions and answers uh, regarding a house foundation. If you're new to this channel, subscribe, join, and leave a comment. I might just make a video specifically for you. Let's move on. And this is assuming all necessary permits for building have been obtained from the appropriate authorities. The first step, site clearing. Site clearing is done to remove all debris and obstructions that may get in the way of the objective. The next step is uh, setting out. This is done to establish necessary setbacks, building lines and building plan outline. I have got a video that explains in detail what this is about. I'll post a link just up there and in the comment. Do all well to check it out. The next step, excavation. The footing trenches, the foundation trenches are excavated to a level specified in the building drawing. Best practice. Try to make sure the trenches are not too wide and not too narrow. If they are too wide, they take up much of the concrete. And if they are too narrow, they become, it becomes hard for the construction workers to maneuver and use. During the excavation, leveling has to be done. The trenches have to be on a uniform level that's assuming the site is flat. And uh, a dumpy level on necessary leveling technique or equipment should be used. And areas where the terrain is sloped, steps should be provided. The next stage is uh, the mud mat or blinding layer. The column footing trenches are casted with plain concrete. Anywhere between 50 mm, 75 mm, just to provide a clean level surface for the footing mesh to be placed and uh, to prevent contamination of the, of the concrete when casting. The next step is our mounting columns. The footing meshes are for isolated columns and uh, combined columns are put into the trenches and uh, the columns are placed, um, are mounted into place. I have a video that details this process. Uh, do well to check it out to get more information on that. The next step is to apply a concrete mix to the mounted column bases. The common question at this stage is uh, what's the grade of the concrete for foundation footing casting? And in response to that, I'll be making a video to address that and that will be uploaded soon. The next step is forming. Blocks are used to form the building plan on the casted footing. The thing to look out for is to check the perpendicularity of all the right angles and uh, be certain that every other angles are as they are shown in the building plan. Use tape measures and building squares and all equipment available to achieve that. After the forming has been done, then the foundation walls are built up. The block work leveling is done to a level above the natural ground level or as proposed in the building plans. After the block walls have uh, been built to the level, the holes are casted with a uh, or a plain mix of concrete. The common question here is uh, why not use solid blocks instead of casting the block holes? Uh, in response, 
The size of blocks used are quite big and uh, using solid blocks for this step and the size may slow down the construction workers and uh, hollow blocks doesn't really compromise the integrity of the foundation walls. The hollow blocks are of high grade and uh, they are actually concrete blocks and uh, in addition to being concrete blocks they are also casted solid so there is no dissimilarity in the long run. Then board the starter columns and plinth beams. Common question at this stage is uh, why are the plinth beams not used? Mostly where the soil is of high bearing capacity and uh, there are no natural disasters and when the building doesn't exceed a G plus one, the engineer in charge of the project may decide not to use plain beams. And the next step is backfilling. But remember, before the backfilling is done, the columns have to be stripped as you remove the boarding on the column. So for the backfilling, the room spaces and the trenches are filled with excavated soil laterite or any other recommended backfill material and then the next item is water jetting this is done to facilitate quick settling of the backfilled soil and to get rid of air pockets that may be present down under it is a very important step and should not be skipped after the water jetting has been done, the next step will be to rama the top of the room spaces and uh, backfill trenches. The rammery is done to compress the backfill and to achieve a uniform level for all the room spaces. There are a couple of machines that are designed for this and uh, for medium sized projects I recommend something of this nature if it's a large scale there are more bigger machines that are suitable for the task after the rammering has been done the next step is a uh, perimeter boarding wood boards planks 1 by 12 planks are attached to the external part of the perimeter walls achieving a uniform level is of utmost importance at this point after the perimeter boarding has been done, the next item will be to apply a damp proof membrane. Damp proofing is done to prevent dampness from getting into the foundation or out of the foundation. Materials used for damp proofing range from bitumen, special type of rubber, plastics, slates, etc. The common question at this point is why place the DPM below the art core? Would it not be perforated by the art core? Well, the DPM is meant to prevent dampness. In cases where the site is not waterlogged, it's very okay to place the damp proof membrane beneath the boulders. The common other question is, is it better to place the, the damp proof layer below the art core or above the art core? Well, they are both correct ways of placing the damp proof membrane and there are just two means to achieve the same end. The next item after the damp proofing has been done is to place the hard core stones and the sizes are such that they do not go above the recommended height that has been specified in the building plans. When the hard core stones are being placed, the plumbing for waste and supply pipes conduits for electricals are also done. These pipes are needed to be installed at this stage to have them concealed in the building. Surface piping do not look nice to be honest. After the piping has been done while the art stones are being placed, BRC mesh is also placed on top of the art stones. This helps to check vibrations that may arise from use of heavy duty equipment within or around the building structure. It also helps prevent cracks in the oversight concrete. When that has been done, the next step is to apply or to place the oversight concrete. 
A good concrete mix is applied over the arco stones at a particular thickness to achieve a uniform level surface. A common question at this stage is what's the grade of concrete for oversight concrete casting? And uh, in response, I will be addressing this in a separate video and uh, the video will be posted soon so be sure to subscribe hit the notification button and join as well your support helps to keep this channel active and is very much appreciated please do not hesitate to check out my other videos thank you so much for watching